and welcome to another TikTok Talks. So today we're covering a couple of bases. First up, I wanted to talk to you about Bioware and Mass Effect. Now we all know that Mass Effect has been a very heated and debated topic recently ever since its release and yeah, with good reason. One of my other TikTok talks talked about the harassment issues and the responses. Now Bioware have officially released a statement saying what their plan is going to the future with Mass Effect Andromeda. It's a nice long list of all the things they're going to fix and when it came out everyone was like okay sure that's cool but you know it'd be nice just to see it implemented and they have started they have started to implement their changes they started off with uh facial tweaks and they've also done game balances for both multiplayer and single player as well as just kind of you know your minor bug fixes things like that the facial animations do look so much better because of these tweaks so it's really nice that Bioware have turned around and gone right we've listened we've actually listened and we're gonna continue to improve the game for you guys they're gonna come out in the form of patches they haven't said how regular these patches are gonna be but presumably they're just gonna kind of roll them out as and when they're completed I will put the link to everything they are going to tweak below because it's quite an extensive list and it will take a lot of time to cover it all in this video and you know I don't want to bore you so go read next up for all you don't starve together fans out there which I am one of them there has been a new update yay now don't starve together doesn't seem to get as many like updates as don't starve in my personal opinion that's just how it feels i do play both like i loved the shipwrecked update for don't starve played it to death and um i was kind of like oh but i want this and don't starve together because i want to be able to hop on a boat and go to different islands and things and it would be fun and cool now that hasn't happened just before you get your hopes up there isn't a shipwreck for don't starve together however the update does include new features so it's called a new rain it is already live on steam so i will include the link so you can go update and things if you haven't bought don't starve together i thoroughly recommend it and yeah what's happened is it's added new giants including uh bee queen claws i think it's called and a toadstool evil killer toadstools always fun uh, as well as it's enhanced some of the biomes some of the environments like the desert environment and presumably the ruin environment there's some really really cool pictures and a trailer again everything will get linked below and yeah i'm really looking forward to this it's nice to get an update i mean rafe Paul and i play a lot of don't staff together because it's fun and we get to shout at the screen a lot and get stressed out and why <laughs> hmm. hmm keep saying it's fun but when you put it like that it doesn't sound very fun i promise it's fun go play it <laughs> but yeah so it's really exciting that we are finally getting an update for don't starve together that is introducing new new elements like big new elements to the game for all you cd project fans out there there has been some controversy surrounding the company in the form that they have filed for and won a trademark agreement with the European Union to claim the word cyberpunk yeah see this company it's one of those companies that's got kind of a do no wrong feel uh, Gwent and Witcher and everything like has earned them such a big positive fan base and such a big reputation um, that it's almost they can get away with anything when you talk about the company uh, however this has caused a little bit of a stink because cyberpunk is such a generic word that 
a lot of people are feeling that to trademark it is well it's a bit cheeky i'm kind of on that boat with them um i want to just clear up it is trademarked it is not copyrighted there is a distinct difference between the two so they have released a statement saying like why they've done it and the reason they've done it is because of their game cyberpunk 2077 that's coming out fair enough then trademark cyberpunk 2077 that would make more sense but they've said they've done it because so many people will try and piggyback off of a game yes it does happen and they don't want to then go one day okay we want to make a sequel and we want to call it cyberpunk 2078 but someone's already claimed it so we can't or someone going one step further and just putting so many barriers up that they couldn't make the game at all M my brain is just going well then just decide what you'd want the title to be called and trademark those titles like ahead of time that way if you do want to make the game you're covered and if you don't want to make the game no harm no foul but nope they've they've trademarked the entire word and yeah it i feel it's very dangerous territory just because trademarking such a generic word and a word that's used in so many things is it's like trademarking the word goth or the word steampunk it's like cyberpunk is an entire subculture um, and there are so many publications they are saying that it won't affect those publications as long as what is released cannot be confused with the cyberpunk 2077 franchise so if you release a game called the cyberpunk tales dystopian futures i don't know something that can't be confused with it or johnny's tales of cyberpunk goodness you know that that won't cause an issue it's to protect them in the future for when they want to release things i i still just think it's it is dangerous territory like i said just because if you start trademarking specific words like if you start granting those trademarks people are just going to be snapping up words left right and center in order to just like be like oh i'm going to trademark the word assassin so now there can't be any more assassin's creed games because i've trademarked that word yep like that's that's kind of where this danger is coming in um on that note it does need to be mentioned that they have actually had or held the trademark for cyberpunk in the u.s since 2011 and there haven't been any issues so i don't so i i don't so much have an objection with them trademarking the word as i more my objection is more the fact that people are allowed to trademark generic words like that just because i think it's gonna cause issues it, one day it's going to cause some serious backlash and then everyone's going to be like well then why did they do it and i don't know i'm on the fence with this one i think it's cheeky but we'll have to wait and see we'll have to wait and see how it pans out so if there is anyone out there who's wanting to release cyberpunk related game book film material you can still use the word cyberpunk in your description and in your titles just make sure it's blatantly obvious it's got nothing to do with Cyberpunk 2077. And lastly, Atlas. More controversy for you guys. Um, Atlas and Persona 5. So if you're on YouTube or on Twitch and you're just going, hmm, I expected more people to be playing Persona 5. Well, there is a reason why no one's playing it that much. And that is that atlas have put a restriction on it <laughs> plain and simple they have turned around and said that they want to protect protect their their customers and their clients um and create a like spoiler free world which with the making of the internet is freaking impossible 
Um, <laughs> because you can't remain spoilers free for that long. Unless you are adamant not to get spoilers and just avoid everything to do with that franchise. Subscription boxes and smart advertising is an extremely good example of that. <laughs> and the fact that it doesn't matter how much we try and avoid, like, the new Firefly box from Loot Crate or something, we'll find out what it is before it arrives because somewhere, someone has spoiled it. So, Persona 5 had these restrictions put on it by Atlas um, and they gave examples of if you're writing about it what would be a good example and what would be classed as a bad example and then they turned around uh, to all the streamers and video content makers and turned around and went right so you guys you're not allowed to film past chapter 7 you are not allowed to film cutscenes you're not allowed to film big boss fights you are not allowed to to film any big story plots um you can film like these little bits of gameplay and that is it that's all you're allowed to do <laughs> which kicked up a stink like a huge stink about this because you know people people do watch these games i was looking forward to watching persona 5 because i don't have a PlayStation. Well, I do, but it's like it's like a PlayStation original. <laughs> and I think we still got a PlayStation 2 lurking around somewhere, but don't know. Um but yeah, I don't have a PlayStation. So I am not gonna go out and buy a PlayStation for one game if I have no idea how it's gonna play. So I was relying on some of the streams that I watch to stream it so I could watch bits of it and then turn around and go, oh, okay, this is really good. I'm going to keep watching it because it's not that level that I want to buy it or flip side of the coin. I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. This is amazing. It's the best game I've ever seen and I'm going to instantly go out and buy a PlayStation, stop watching, so I can play it myself. Like, that that feasibly could have happened. Like, from watching them play it, I could have gone, that's incredible. My personal issue with this ban, because what they have said is that if you are found breaking any of these rules, that they will issue a content ID claim, or at worst get your channel shut down which is just like okay so because you're super paranoid about giving spoilers for a game that's been out for months in Japan that you would ruin someone's career over it because people do people pick up games there are streams that pick up games purely to stream them that is their career and that's why they do it so like I found that a bit of a a bit of a dick move but I also found this ban incredibly insulting as a consumer because like I know if I watch a stream or a video I'm gonna get spoils on what that content is I'm gonna watch that content I also know that I have the ability to not watch it I have the ability to walk away which I have done I didn't want any spoils for Mass Effect Andromeda so I watched a few minutes of it to see what the fuss was with the animations to see you know what the game played like and how similar it was to the others and then I went right I don't want to watch anymore I'm gonna close it and because I am an intelligent and normal human being I have the brain power to do that I have the brain power to go no I don't want to be spoiled for this so I'm not going to watch it. Um, so it just feels kind of like Atlas are almost insulting their customers by saying, well, we don't want you to do it because our customers are stupid enough that they'll just watch it and then they'll bitch about it. I, I, I kind of just feel really disrespected by that. So, yeah. I'm afraid, guys, if you wanted to watch Persona 5, you can't. You have to go buy a PlayStation and play the game. And if you can't afford that, then you're stuck. 
Atlas don't care. <laughs> Basically, that's that's kind of the the gist of what I was getting from this whole debacle. I will link what they have said, their specific post below, so you can read it for yourself. But yeah, that's kind of where it went. Well, thank you for tuning in, guys. Uh, it's been very ranty, this TikTok talk, so I do apologise. But I hope you had an informative time and that you have an awesome day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.